Hello, welcome back to part three of Old Testament Children of the East. For those of you that are following along in your Bibles, please turn to Genesis chapter 21 and we will begin our study. Wherefore, she said unto Abraham, Cast out this bondwoman and her son, for the son of this bondwoman shall not be heir with my son, even with Isaac. Now you see the contention has reached its climax. Sarah is upset with Hagar with this mocking child of hers that's teasing her beloved son Isaac, and she goes to Abraham with her grievance. Cast out these people. Put them out of our home. I'm tired of dealing with this other wife. And the thing was very grievous in Abraham's sight because of his son. Notice that maybe he wasn't as fond of wife number two, but the love for his son was certainly a strong love. And this grieved him in his heart, the Bible records, because of the great love that he had for his son. This is not a, a decision that Abraham was going to make lightly. Wherefore she said unto Abraham, Cast out this bondwoman and her son. She will not be an heir. She did not want this child to inherit with her own. And God said unto Abraham, Let it not be grievous in thy sight because of the lad, and because of thy bondwoman. And all that Sarah hath said unto thee, hearken unto her voice, for in Isaac shall thy seed be called. Okay? So Abraham instructs, or Abraham is instructed by God to do something very strange. Hearken to the voice of your wife. Um, you did before. It got you in this predicament to begin with. Now I'm asking you to do it again. This time, put out the woman, put out your son. And also, the son of the bondwoman Ishmael will I make a nation, God promises, because he is thy seed. And Abraham rose up early in the morning and took bread and a bottle of water and gave it into Hagar, putting it on her shoulder, and the child, and she was sent away. She departed and wandered in the wilderness of Beersheba. Now, this is an interesting scripture to me. The reason why I highlighted bread and water because these two elements are something you see quite often in Scripture. Bread often representing the Word of God, while water often representing um, repentance, uh, a cleansing, uh, a new life being given uh, to the recipient of it. Uh, Jesus spoke to a woman of Samaria, also descendants of children, the children of the East, uh, at a well one day, and He told her that He... Uh, would turn into a spring of living water uh, in the soul of those who would accept him. So this is an interesting scripture that Abraham provides something for the sake of this child as he has sent away from Abraham's home. Arise, lift up the lad, and hold him in thy hand, for I will make him a great nation. God promises to make this son a great nation as well. I want you to notice the blue arrow at the bottom of the screen. This is where it is believed by many that Hagar fled into this uh, geographical area uh, known today as Mecca. There is a, a well there that is believed to be a well that was provided for the sustenance of Hagar and her child uh, when they were sent away. Uh, there's no clear way of establishing this to be fact, but this is believed by million, millions of people. As a matter of fact, 1.5 billion adherents to the religion of Islam believe this to be true, and there's uh, really no way to disprove it either. This could um, very well be the place where Hagar fled. Genesis chapter 25 1 through 3, we look at some more children that were born to Abraham. Then again, Abraham took a wife. Many people may not know this, but Abraham was married three times. And here he takes a third wife. Her name was Keturah. And she bare him Zimram and Jokshan 
and Midian, uh, Medan and Midian. Now, I highlighted the word Midian because we're going to see this word, uh, its people, his descendants, and the geographical region named after him in multiple Old Testament stories uh, in a very significant way. It goes on to name the rest of the sons. Uh, the sons of Dedan will see this name again in prophecy later on, uh, as well as Midian. And the sons of Midian were Ephraim and uh, Ephraim, and Hanak and Abiah and El Eladi. All of these were the children of Keturah. So Abraham had more children. These children also um, settled in the eastern country, uh, the, the promised land in chapter 15, and amalgamated with the descendants of Ishmael. Uh, this is the children of the east. And Abraham gave up the ghost and died in a good old age, an old man full of years and was gathered to his people. And his sons Isaac, his son Isaac, sons, I should say, Isaac and Ishmael buried him in the cave of Machpelah. Okay? So at the end of Abraham's life, his son of promise Isaac came together with his firstborn Ishmael. Uh, there was obviously at least no contention for the sake of the funeral. The two came together, buried their father as the Bible records. Genesis chapter 37. It's an interesting story about a man named Joseph. Now Joseph had 12 or 11 brothers, I should say. And as you may remember, there was contention in this family. The other brothers did not like the younger very much, and Joseph was persecuted by his brothers. There's a story where Joseph was thrown into a pit and was going to be left for dead. But some people came to his aid. If you read the biblical account, you'll discover that these were Midianites. Now, in the very next verse, after being described as Midianites or identified as such, it also uh, uh, uses the word Ishmaelites to describe the same group of people that happened by that purchased Joseph, that brought him up out of the pit and carried him into Egypt. Now, this is significant because had Joseph not been carried into Egypt, what would have happened to the descendants of Abraham on this side of the family? Joseph, uh, rec it's recorded in Scripture that Joseph, when reunited with his family at the end of the book of Genesis, describes to his brethren how God had, um, had actually used the circumstances the animosity that was present between the brethren uh, to bring about a great deliverance for his people. If it had not been that Joseph had been brought to Egypt as a slave, uh, the circumstances would have never presented themselves for him to become a great leader in Egypt and work for the, the sake of salvation of his family. They would have died during the plague. So. Uh, because of God's intervention and because of this particular group of people, these Midianite or Ishmaelite traders, they became the conduit through which um, Joseph was taken into Egypt and God's remnant uh, people on, the, on Isaac's side of the family were delivered from sure destruction uh, during the years of famine. Okay. Please join us again for part four of Old Testament Children of the East, and we will continue our study. Thank you so much.